Uh, hello everyone. Um, today we're going to look at the approach to lymphoid proliferations. And uh, what I want to highlight is firstly, what are the important questions that need to be answered? Secondly, how does the pathologist decide whether we are dealing with a reactive versus a neoplastic lymphoid proliferation? And thirdly, uh, just some practical points for the clinician. So what are the questions? Um, of course, the most important question is, are we dealing with a reactive lymphoid hyperplasia or a neoplastic one, which is a lymphoma? And the second question is, when, once we decide that it's a lymphoma, we then need to, sub, we need to type the lymphoma. The most uh, useful classification is Hodgkin versus non-Hodgkin lymphomas. Now what we'll be dealing with in extra nodal sites such as the orbit is almost always going to be a non-Hodgkin lymphoma. And we further subtype it into B-cell lymphomas, which may be of high or low grade, and I will talk a little bit about that later or T-cell lymphomas, which are much less common than B-cell lymphomas. So the commonest lymphoma that you will be dealing with will be a B-cell lymphoma. Now, how does the pathologist decide? Well, it starts with microscopy, and we always begin with low power to assess the architecture. We then move on to high power, where we want to look at the types of cells, the cell size, and the appearance of the cells or cytomorphology. Following microscopy, we may do some ancillary tests, including immunohistochemistry, sometimes flow cytometry, and occasionally molecular testing. So let's uh, look at microscopy. As you can see, I've got a very low power picture here. This is some tissue taken from the orbit, and you can see a nodular proliferation. The nodules are very well circumscribed, and they have a pale center. So this is an example of a reactive lymphoid follicle. So this is most likely a reactive lymphoid proliferation. Now, um, on low power microscopy, we focus on architecture, as mentioned. In reactive lymphoid proliferations, we will see reactive lymphoid follicles with these uh, pale germinal centers. And this whole reactive follicle is composed mostly of B cells or B lymphocytes. There will be a non-destructive or infiltrative growth pattern. As compared to lymphomas, where there is a more sheet-like cellular proliferation and there may be a destructive growth or the lymphoid proliferation may infiltrate into the adjacent tissues. Some lymphomas can also have a nodular architecture, including follicular lymphoma, where we have back-to-back -back proliferation of neoplastic follicles, marginal zone lymphoma and Hodgkin lymphoma. Then moving on to high power, we want to then focus on the cell types. So in reactive proliferations, we will see mixed cell sizes with the small cells predominating. And in lymphomas, it's a more monotonous cell population. They will usually be of one cell type. If the large cells predominate, and we call them large as um, when we compare them with endothelial cells lining blood vessels, usually about the same size or larger would be considered large. Large cell predominant lymphomas are usually high grade and they actually respond very well to chemotherapy. As opposed to small cell predominant lymphomas, which are usually of a lower grade and unfortunately they don't respond so well to chemotherapy. We also want to focus on the appearance of the cells, looking for enlarged nuclei, coarse chromatin and prominent nucleoli and all of these features point to a neoplastic or malignant um, behavior. Now ancillary tests, uh, before we talk about individual tests, we need to also decide on what are we actually testing for. So there are two main things that we are testing for. The first is the cell type. We want to know um, in a reactive lymph node uh, whether we are looking at a mixed cell population. So if we see a combination of B cells and T cells, B cells usually in germinal centers and T cells outside, then it is more convincing of a reactive proliferation. Whereas in lymphomas, uh, we would see a predominant B cell type. Uh, most of the lymphomas, as mentioned, will be B cell lymphomas. So we would see sheets of B cells. And then we want to zoom in specifically into the subtype. And for these, we also apply specific markers for uh, B cell lymphoma subtypes or T cell lymphoma subtypes. 
So the second uh, thing that we are testing for is actually clonality. So it's cell type, firstly, followed by clonality. Now clonality usually, not always, but usually means that we are dealing with a neoplastic lymphoid proliferation. Of course, there are some false positives occasionally. So how do we assess B cell clonality? Uh, we know that B cells will ultimately produce antibodies or immunoglobulins. We want to look at rearrangements um, in the light chain genes or we want to look at specific light chain overproduction. So there are two main light chains, kappa and lambda, and um, if there is one that is produced far in excess of the other, then there is, that is presumptive evidence of B cell clonality. T cell clonality is measured by gene rearrangements in the T cell receptor genes. So T cell clonality can generally only be assessed by molecular testing, whereas B cell clonality can be assessed by a different variety of test types. So now what are the types of ancillary tests that we often do? Um, there are three main types, immunohistochemistry, flow cytometry, and molecular testing. In terms of tissue fixation, um, most of these can be done on fixed paraffin embedded formalin fixed tissue except for flow cytometry which requires fresh tissue. This is why we often ask clinicians to send suspected lymphomas fresh. Um, all these three cell uh, test types can be done on uh, FNA or cytology material. Now, um, which of these tests can assess cell type? Well, generally immunohistochemistry and flow cytometry, not so much for molecular tests. For clonality, all three test types are used. And um, for immunohistochemistry and flow, we use this to assess kappa and lambda light chain restriction, meaning that they can be used to assess B cell clonality. And molecular tests can be used to assess B cell clonality, looking at the immunoglobulin heavy chain gene rearrangements, or T cell clonality, looking at T cell re uh, receptor gene rearrangements. If we are looking to look, uh, to, we're looking for translocations or gene amplifications. This is usually when we've already decided that it's a lymphoma and we want to subtype or confirm our suspicion. Then most of the time we will apply molecular tests using FISH or PCR-based tests. Um, immunohistochemistry can um, assess a very very small minority of translocations, but the most accurate test um, is molecular testing. So just to show you um, pictorially what ancillary tests look like, this is immunohistochemistry and most of the time we will apply a very basic panel of CD20 to assess for B cells and CD3 to assess for T cells. So when you see this picture here, you see a rounded nodular proliferation of CD20 positive B cells and this represents a germinal uh, a germinal center and a lymphoid follicle, whereas the CD3 positive T cells are usually located just outside, and this is um, indicative of a normal reactive uh, lymphoid follicle. When What is abnormal is when we see B cell predominance, that means um, a lot of CD20 positive CD79A or PEX5 positive B cells outside of germinal centers. Now this is an example of kappa and lambda-ish ISH stands for in situ hybridization. It is also done very similarly to immunohistochemistry and we can actually visualize the results here. We can see um, kappa production in the plasma cells. We look for very dark brown staining in plasma cells, which is slightly more than lambda uh, expressing plasma cells. And this is normal or reactive because we usually have slightly a slight predominance of kappa expression over lambda expression. So we would call this no demonstrable light chain restriction. And if it is abnormal, then there will be a much greater excess in either kappa or lambda expression, in which case we will report it as kappa or lambda light chain restriction. So ish is reported by the histopathologist. Now, um, the last part is some practical points for the clinician to take note. Um, First of all, uh, how do you send the tissue? So uh, it's important for you to know that you need to send the tissue fresh. So just place the tissue piece in an empty specimen bottle. Do not suspend it in saline or any fixative. And of course, you want to send it immediately. 
If you are doing the procedure after office hours, then it is very simple. Just put it in formalin as with any other specimen because we can still do most of our tests on formalin fixed tissue as I mentioned earlier on. So what does the pathologist actually do with the specimen? When we receive a fresh specimen, we will usually just make a cut or we bisect it to have a fresh surface. Then we will lightly touch it onto a glass slide so that the cells will uh, be seen on the slide. We will stain it quickly with our cytology stains, which uh, are completed in a few minutes. And then we will assess to see if we think it's a lymphoma. If we suspect lymphoma, we will cut a small portion of the specimen, only about 2 by 2 millimeters in size. We will fix it in RPMI. This is the pink solution that we use. And we will send it to hematology lab to perform flow cytometry to assess the cell type and perhaps the kappa lambda light chain for B cell clonality. The rest of the tissue is then fixed in abundant formalin and they are processed into paraffin embedded blocks and we will cut our usual H and E sections. So that is actually all that I want to discuss today. So let's just uh, summarize. Um, clonality in general suggests a lympho a lymphoma or lymphoproliferative disease and we need you to send the tissue fresh immediately what we will assess is on microscopy, we will look at the architecture on low power, whether it is reactive lymphoid follicles versus a sheet-like or destructive growth pattern. We will look at the cell size, um, mixed cell types uh, usually seen in reactive proliferation, mixed cell size as well as mixed type of uh, B and T cells versus monotonous cell size and uh, single cell type B or T cells usually favor lymphoma. We will apply ancillary tests. The most commonly done ones would be immunohistochemistry and then plus or minus flow cytometry if we have fresh material. And um, not so often, we sometimes do molecular testing. This is mainly to subtype a lymphoma. So immunohistochemistry and flow cytometry are used to determine the cell type and clonality. And molecular testing is usually used to determine um, subtype of lymphoma by looking at specific translocations or amplifications. And also in difficult and challenging cases, we use it to assess clonality in B or T cells. So this essentially is how the pathologist approaches lymphoid proliferations. It is a general overview and I hope it will improve your understanding of um, our handling of these cases. So um, after viewing this video, you can uh, log on to Socrative and you can um, go on to do the post test. Thank you.